galwyr aelodau i drefn a chrysawyr aelodau i'r pwyllgor o'r cynulliad cyfan sy'n ystyried cyfnod dai o'r gwelliannau i'r bil cyfred sy'n deillio'r Undeb Europeaidd Cymru. Y grŵp cynta o welliannau yn ymwneud ag adran pedwar deddfiadau sy'n deillio o'r Undeb Europeaidd. Gwelliant un yw'r prif welliant yn y grŵp, a dwi'n galw ar arwain iddo ti i gynnig y prif welliant ac i siarad am y gwelliant yma ar gwelliannau eraill yn y grŵp, Julie James. Diolllawydd. I'm sure members will appreciate that the task of preparing this bill over a relatively short period and in a way which is intellectually coherent and legally robust has been a formidable challenge. And at the start of this debate, I'd like to pay tribute to those officials who have worked so very hard to bring it forward. Yeah. Since introducing the bill, we have continued to test its robustness and consider how efficiently it will deliver our desired outcomes. Amendments 1 to 4 have resulted from that further consideration and address purely technical issues with the current draft. The principal amendment in this group is Amendment 2, and it addresses two separate issues. Firstly, as currently drafted, Section 4 could be interpreted as suggesting that only enactments which are entirely within the Assembly's legislative competence would be the subject of the power in that section. This is not our intention. Our intention is that the power in Section 4 should be capable of being used so that an enactment which is partly within the Assembly's legislative competence and partly outside legislative competence could be disapplied in relation to Wales and then restated to the extent that it is within the Assembly's competence. For example, an EU-derived enactment could contain powers that grant both the Welsh Ministers and UK Ministers the power to make regulations, but where the power of the Welsh Ministers is limited to devolved matters. This amendment will enable the Welsh ministers, ministers to disapply the Welsh Minister's power contained in that enactment and restate it with any necessary modifications without in any way stepping outside competence. Amendment 2 makes it clear that the power in Section 4 can be used in relation to enact, enactments which lie partly within and partly without the Assembly's legislative competence. However, to be clear, the amendment will not enable the Welsh Ministers to be able to repeal or restate enactments which are wholly outside devolved competence. The, the power will remain limited by reference to the competence of the Assembly. The second purpose of Amendment 2 is to reduce the number of enactments that would have to be fully restated under Section 4. The amendment would enable the Welsh Ministers to specify subordinate legislation that would simply continue in effect with any necessary modifications set out in regulations rather than require that the secondary legislation is restated. The approach in Section 4 for subordinate legislation would then broadly mirror the approach already taken in Section 5. An example of the overall effect of this amendment is provided by the restriction of the use of certain hazardous substances in electrical and electronic equipment regulations 2012. Looking at the first purpose of this amendment, without the amendment, provisions of these regulations would not fall within the scope of Section 4 as some of the regulations are not wholly within devolved competence. Then, taking the second purpose of the amendment, it enables the Welsh Ministers to provide that, to the extent the regulations relate to devolved matters, they are to continue in effect. Without the amendment, it would be necessary to restate the devolved provision contained in the regulations. Amendments 1, 3 and 4 are consequential to Amendment 2. In particular, Amendments 3 and 4 ensure that in relation to subordinate legislation, continued in effect by virtue of regulations made under the amended Section 4, only modifications which are necessary could be made to it. These amendments represent an important improvement in the clarity and efficiency of the Bill, and I urge members to support them. Does dim siaradwyr eraill ar y grŵp yma, felly dwi'n cymryd fod ar wein iddo ti ddim eisiau defnyddio i hawli ymateb i unrhyw ddadl ag felly y cwestiwn i'w adeilid Derbyn Gwelliant Un. A oes unrhyw wrth wynebiad? Gwrth wynebi. Symudwn felly i bleidlais electronic. A gor y bleidlais. Cair bleidlais, o blaid trideg naw, un ar ddeg yn ymatal, un yn erbyn, ac felly derbyniwyd gwelliant un. Grŵp nesa o welliannau, 
Yw grŵp dai ac yn ymwneud ag enwe bwydydd gwarchodau dig. Gwelliant saith yw'r prif welliant yn y grŵp yma. Ond rwy'n galw'r Simon Thomas i gynnig y prif welliant ag i siarad am y gwelliant yma a'r gwelliant neu eraill yn y grŵp. Diolch yn fawr llawydd, dwi'n cynnig gwelliant saith a'r gwelliant un a ddeg yn y grŵp sydd yn fy enw i ac yfan grŵp plaid Cymru. Dwi'n gobeithio gan bod ni'n cyfarfod fel pwllgo cyfan y Senedd ac yn illiad y pnaw yma. Nid yn un y gyrenwais i geraeth bron am lain llaw, fyddwch chi'n galw i gymryd rhan yn y trofodaeth yma, ond fyddwch chi'n agor y drws i'r pleidiau eraill. Dwi'n edrych ymlaen i glywed pam fod y trofiad yn gwrthwynebu y gwelliann y fel maen nhw'n dechrau naid naid, byl i hyn yna, dwi'n edrych ymlaen ac yn colli y dweud y gwir, rhai o'r cyfaniadau mwy cyfansoddiadol fydd am felly aelod fan draw yn ei naid. Ond mae'r gwelliann y hyn yn amwyn naid yn benodol a'r angen i wachod enwau gwachod dedig Cymraeg wrth yn i ymadael ar Undeb Europeaidd. Ac fydd y gwelliann yn rhoi dyletswydd a wynidogion Cymru gan taw y bod y bil yma'n rhoi pwerau sylweddol i wynidogion Cymru, cofiwch chi hynny, i wachod yr enwau hynny ac i wneud yn siŵr bod ni gofa glas yn afos ti fewn i system enwau dynodedig ar Undeb Europeaidd a'r hyn sy'n cael ei nabod gan fwyaf fel PGI ef bod yna enwau eraill o gwmpas. Nawr, a chyn y byd, mae yna 16 o cynhyrchion bwyd Cymraeg wedi cofestrio dan y drefn Europeaidd, a mae yna dau arall yn aros i gael ei dderbyn. Mae rhai ond nhw yn gyfarwydd iawn iawn i aelodau. Mae ci gôn a ci gaidion o Gymru, wrth gwrs, wedi wachod. Caws caiffili. Er bod ni'n cael eu cynnyrchu yn cefedigion, a jyst os y ffyn gyda sy'n cefedigion. Halen Môn, Sywyn, neu Bwythlyll y Môn, sy'n wedi cael ei ddala yn y ffordd ddoddodiadol yn y Cwfwgl, yn cael ei amddiffyn, ham Sir Gaa, gewch chi yn y farchnad yn gyfyrddyn. I gyd wedi wachod, fel wrth gwrs, sy'n ni'n gwybod, am y bwydydd gwych pan gyda ni'n mynd ramod, ac yn mynd ar y cyfandir, ac yn gweld y bwydydd gwych sy'n wedi wachod fan yna. Ond nid jyst yr enwau sydd yn bwysig, ond status economaidd y diwylliannol sydd tu ôl iddyn nhw. Felly, mae hybu cig Cymru wedi canfod bod allforion cig o nhw Gymru wedi tyfu 5 ar 20 a 100 ers yn ei cael y status dynagedig PGI. Mae yna gwerth economaidd iddyn nhw. Mae'r Comisiwn Europeaidd wedi canfod bod gwerth a gyfer unrhyw un sydd wedi dynodi yn ddeirfyddol, unrhyw cynnych sydd wedi dynodi yn ddeirfyddol, yn 1.55. Hynny yw, mae gael chi 1.55 yn fwy y bunt am bod gyda chi y status yma o PGI neu tebyg. A dim ond heddi, mae'r Western Mail wedi cyhoeddi bod 5 ar 20, na, mae'n dwi'n dwi, 55 y cant o cwsmeriad yng Nghymru yn ffafio prynu bwyd gyda status PGI, 37 y cant yn dweud y byddwn nhw'n fwy tebyg o lawau i prynu cig o'n y Gymru, pe bai yn dwi'n y status yna, oherwydd bod yn dwi'n y status yna, a 49 y cant, ond yw'ch gyfer cig aidion y dydy gwir, bo'n hanner o cwsmeriad Cymru yn ffafio cig aidion o Gymru, oherwydd bod gyda fe y status yma. Felly mae amddiffyn y status yma yn bwysig iawn. Na, wan San Stefan, gwrs yn ni'n cofio bod y bil yma yn fersiwn o'r bil sy'n mynd drwy San Stefan y bil y madal yr Undeb Europeaidd, yn ei ddim wedi cael y cytundeb rhwng y llywodraeth yma a llywodraeth San Stefan i weld pa llwybr ei fynd, ond mae'n bwysig rhoi â'r gofnod bod y gwynidog busnes sydd yn naid y swy tebyg i Julie James yn San Stefan wedi gweld bod dosdim modd gwafanti bod enwau fel hyn yn cael ei diogelu o thi y madal yr Undeb Europeaidd. Ac mae'r perig fan yna i allforion o Gymru, i ffenwyr ac ymaethwyr Cymru ac i cynhyrchwyr bwyd Cymru. Felly, mae yn bwysig dwi'n meddwl bod ni fel cynulliad yn ystyried y materion yma wrth drafod yn deddfwyaeth yn hunan. Wi'n gobeithio yn fawr, felly, y bydd y cynulliad yn mateb yn bositif i'r gwelliannau hyn ac yn wneud pob dim o fewn yn gallu ni i sicrhau bod ni'n cadw status enwau gwachodedig ag yfa bwydydd da iawn o Gymru. Neil Hamilton. Uh, Presiding officer, um, thank you very much for that. I'm delighted to uh, support Plaid Cymru's amendment on this particular uh, aspect of uh, the exit uh, of Britain from the EU. Uh, from the EU. As uh, Simon Thomas has amply pointed out, there is economic advantage in these protected designations, and uh, I see the opportunity in years to come being outside the EU 
to use the freedoms that we will have in terms of marketing Welsh produce to expand the market for our goods. We've been precluded from doing this in many respects hitherto because of the requirements of EU legislation and freed from that we will be able to paddle our own canoe or coracle as the uh, case may be. Uh, and then uh, products such as uh, uh, Conoy mussels, Hallin Moon, salt, salt, Pembrokeshire early potatoes will be able to take advantage of the new freedoms. So I think these are so self-evidently obvious that uh, further exposition is unnecessary. And with that, I'll sit down. Galwavar Arwenith a T, Julie James. Um, as Simon Thomas said, food names that are protected by geographical indicators are important to the Welsh economy and a key part of promoting the Welsh food and drink industry. I think Neil Hamilton was attempting to agree with him, but then I felt the rest of his, uh, his remarks went slightly off the point that Simon Thomas was trying to make. So I think we all agree anyway that products such as Welsh lamb, Hallamon Anglesey sea salt, and with a very recent designation, uh, Kaus Kefili, traditional Kefili cheese, are well recognised and protection has provided businesses with a unique selling point and protection against fraud and imitation, as, as Simon pointed out. Geographical indicators for food are governed at the EU level by an EU regulation on quality schemes for agricultural products and foodstuffs. Our preference for the future is for the arrangements for the protection of products to be developed in conjunction with the rest of the UK and the EU. This is fully in line with our and Plaid Cymru's commitment to the fullest possible participation in the single market, compatible with no longer being a member state, and would be the very best way to continue to enjoy the commercial benefits which currently flow from this recognition. Our aim is therefore to ensure that current protections afforded to Welsh produce continue after the UK, EU the UK withdraws from the EU, and we will keep the Assembly informed about progress in this matter. However, in the absence of a negotiated EU-wide agreement for this important issue, we would be able to make regulations under Section 3 of this Bill to make corresponding provision to that contained in the relevant EU regulation and EU tertiary legislation. This would ensure that Welsh products, produce that currently enjoys protection against imitation would continue to do so in Wales. Given the thinking that is currently underway and our intention to protect our producers where appropriate, I believe that the proposed amendment is not necessary. It could also cast doubt on the powers available under Section 3 by inadvertently suggesting that that power is not sufficiently broad to provide for the continued protection of food geographical indicators. However, I want to absolutely emphasise that the Welsh Government certainly values the geographical indicators and we will do all we can to ensure that the protections currently afforded by them to Welsh businesses continue to be available following the UK's exit from the EU. I therefore urge members not to agree to amendments 7 and 11 um, because we think that the provisions that Simon Thomas wants to achieve are already contained within Section 3. Simon Thomas, Siamata Birdadl. Uh, thank you, Shawith, and uh, I'll take support from whichever quarter it comes, even if I don't agree with the reasons uh, always for that support. But um, uh, I'm very grateful for, for that. Um, I think Welsh food is brilliant. Uh, I think we have the best pasture in the world. We have the highest quality animal welfare, uh, the best leeks, of course, as well as the early potatoes, the best cockles and mussels. Um, and I say those, and I'm just trying to tempt uh, David Melding to take part in the debate by saying cockles and mussels, but uh, he still sits down and doesn't, uh, doesn't take part uh, in this. I, I'm very lucky. I live in Aberystwyth. Those of us who live in Ceredigion are blessed with uh, two of the best food markets uh, in, uh, well, just outside Ceredigion in, in Sandoch and, and Aberystwyth as well. We can pick the best Welsh produce uh, almost every week, um, but it's not available for everyone. And as we move along the food chain, the value that we build into that food chain is absolutely essential for the future of the, the Welsh economy as we leave the European Union. Uh, and uh, <coughs> I want to see uh, our farmers make the best and have the best advantage uh, from this. And part of that must be about maintaining standards and quality and having a recognisable brand that everyone else also knows is that standards and quality. I hear uh, what the uh, Minister had to say, and I, I welcome her. Uh, two super subs are doing this, uh, this uh, bill today uh, due to uh, uh, other circumstances. But uh, I think when she says there are powers in the bill, I recognise there are powers in the bill, but I think a statement from the Assembly on a vote around these issues would be perhaps symbolic, but nevertheless important, uh, would send a very positive message, would also send a message to DEFRA, who have uh, you know, let to, yet to concede even that this assembly is the place that decides these matters, actually wants to try and control how food from Wales is branded in the future, has talked about all kinds of food branding schemes. I've got no problem with food from the UK being recognised as food from the UK. Don't get me wrong. 
Uh, but food from Wales, which is, has these particular statuses, has to have that unique branding. It can't simply be subsumed in a, a, an overall export market that simply says this is food from the UK. That's not good enough. That is not good enough. And as we don't have the commitment uh, from the Westminster end yet, and as, a, as I recognise the powers uh, are there, but their powers vested in ministers, I would like this additional duty placed on ministers, and I think it's worth uh, pressing the Assembly to have its uh, say on that matter. A question you are the leader of the Gwelliant South. I was in Rhwyd Wynebiad. Some of you don't need lice electronic, Felly. <coughs> Agor a blade lice. Caer <coughs> blade lice. Oblaid daideg pimp in an amatal daideg wyth an erbyn, felly gwrthodwyd Gwelliant dai. Saith. <laughs> Gwelliant dai. Samed a Gwelliant. Move the amendment to. Would you like to object? Gwrthwyn Abbey. So we don't need blade lice electronic. I got a blade lice. Cair blade lies. Oblaid pedwar deg, deidheg yn y matal, dai yn erbyn, derbyniwyd y gwelliant. Gwelliant tri ar wenydd y tîm. Cwestiwn i'w oedd y lid derbyn gwelliant tri. A oes unrhyw wrth wynebiad? Wrth wynebiad. So mi'n i blade lies electronic agor y blade lies. Cair blade lice, o blaid pedro de gyn deuddeg yn y matal, un yn erbyn, derbyniwyd y gwelliant. Rwy'n iddo ti gwelliant pedwar. Cwestiwn i'w oedd y lid erbyn gwelliant pedwar, a oes unrhyw wrthwynebiad? Wrthwynebiad. Symud i blade lice electronic, agor y blade lice. Cair blade lice, o blaid pedro de gyn Deuddeg yn y matal, un yn erbyn, derbyniwyd y gwelliant pedwar. Y grŵp nesaf o welliannau yw grŵp tri, sy'n ymwneud ag adran un ar ddeg, y pwer i wneud darpariaeth sy'n cyfateb i gyfraith yr undeb Ewropeaidd ar ôl y diwrnod y madel. Gwelliant wyth yw'r prif welliant yn y grŵp yma, a dwi'n galw ar Simon Thomas i gynnig y prif welliant i chi'n siarad am y gwelliant yma ar gwelliannau eraill yn y grŵp Simon Thomas. Uh, diolch llawydd, dwi'n cynnig welliant oeth a rai welliant arall yn y grŵp sydd yn uh, welliant dilynol uh, ac annaniadol i'r gwelliant uh, hwnnw. Um, Cydestyn y gwelliant yma, wrth gwrs, yw bod y bil yma yn rhoi pwerau uh, uh, sylweddol, uh, dwfn a helaeth i gweinidogion Cymru. Uh, mae'n galluogi nhw i newid gyfoeth uh, Cymru, newid gyfoeth uh, cynradd ac ailradd, ac mae'n galluogi nhw i wneud hynny ar hyn o byd yn ddiben fraw ac yn barhaol. Now, mae pob un ohonyn ni, dwi'n meddwl, wel, gyda'i fan fwy ohonyn ni, beth bynnag, yn cydnabod bod angen pwerwyr fath yma sydd ond yn cael ei dyfannu mewn cyfnodau prin iawn a herwydd y sefyllfa arbennig sy'n deillio o gadael yr Undeb Europeaidd. Nid oes neb yma, dwi ddim yn meddwl, yn mwyn i sefyllfa codi lle mae yna bwlch deddfwriaethol uh, yn digwydd, lle does dim modd er enghraifft gweithredu a fan clefyd anifeiliad, neu gweithredu o fan rhywbeth amgylcheddol, neu gweithredu o fan rhywbeth amddiffyniad cymdeithasol, yn syml iawn oherwydd nad oes gan Gwynedogion Cymru y pwerau i naidau ar y dwnnod. Ac felly nid yw ein amaferol i disgwyl i Gwynedogion yn y cydestyn yma ddod yn ôl dwachefn a dwachefn i'r Senedd yn chwilio am awdidodaeth a gyfer y defnyddiwr gwymoedd yna. Ond nid yw ein chwaith yn ddyfyniol i unrhyw senedd i roi hawliad i bendraw i gwynedogion i ddefnyddio pwerau enfawr yma a helaeth yma fel arfer yn cael ei uh, cynabod fel gwymoedd uh, uh, hafu rwythfed uh, yn y cydestyn Gymraeg. Uh, felly, beth mae'r uh, gwelliant yma yn ei wneud a gwelliannau eraill yw dod i cymal machlyd uh, yn y bil. Fe nes i yw gymru hyn gyntaf tu'r pythefnos yn ôl pan oedd y sgrifennydd y cyllid ar y pryd yn uh, cyflwyno um, y raglen ar gyfer y bil, yr amselen, 
Fynach Leon Wood, Sôn am Cymru Matlid, wrth ymateb i egwyddorion cyffredinol y bil. Fe wnaeth adroddiad pwyllgor cyfansoddiadol a deddwriaethol hefyd o gymru yn argymelliad pimp yr adroddiad y pwyllgor hwnnw, a byddai fe'n briodol i ystyried rhoi amselen a diben a grymoedd gwynedogion Cymru. Felly, mae gwelliant yma am gwneud yn siŵr a ôl pum dwrnod a ôl dwrnod gadael yr undeb Europeaidd fydd y grymoedd yma yn syrthio. Byddwn nhw'n dod i ben. Byddwn nhw'n rhaid i gwynedogion Cymru dod nôl i cynulliad os nhw'n am ail rymuso ei hunan yn un a pwyweba hyn. Byddwn nhw'n rhaid i cynulliad cymru dwy o hynny ac wrth gwrs edrych hynny bydd gan y cynulliad amser i weld a fyddwn nhw'n briodol o hyd i fwy y fath grymoedd i llywodraeth. Felly, yn y cydestyn sydd ohoni, mae rhoi cymaint o grymoedd i'r gwynedogion yn ddibyniol a fan am y feddoldeb ac a fan dichonoldeb y hawl i fynd i'r afael o adeddwriaeth. Ond nid yw yn ddigon am man plaid Gymru bod hyn yn ddibenfraw a heb derfyn amser. Felly, rwy'n gobeithio fydd y Senedd cyfan yn gallu cymrwydwyo y cymal machlyd yma a gwneud y pwyweba yn dod i ben a wol pum mynedd. Galwaf ar arweinydd y tŷ, Julie James. Yes, recommendation five of the report published by the Constitution and Legislative Affairs Committee was that amendments should be brought forward to provide for a sunset clause in respect of the power provided to the Welsh Ministers by section 11 of the Bill. Amendment eight broadly replicates recommendation five, except that the report on the continuing necessity of the power would be prepared by the Welsh Government rather than a committee of the Assembly. I note that there would be nothing to prevent an Assembly committee from undertaking its own review and publishing its own report on the power in section 11. And I further note that granting a power for an Assembly Committee to conduct such a review could inadvertently raise questions about the broad scrutiny powers that committees currently enjoy. The Cabinet Secretary for Finance indicated in his response to the Constitution and Legislative Affairs Committee that he would work with Assembly members to bring forward an appropriate amendment to Section 11, and I am content to support the Amendment 8 brought forward by Simon Thomas. I note that Amendment 12 requires that the enhanced procedure applies to regulations that would extend the life of the power rather than the affirmative procedure that was recommended by the Committee. By adopting the enhanced procedure, it would give the Assembly and its committees time to consider the report laid by the Welsh Ministers as part of the scrutiny of the regulations before deciding whether to agree to extend the life of the power in Section 11. I therefore also support these amendments. Under the enhanced procedure, the Assembly may decide to approve the regulations without the need to follow the procedures laid out in the enhanced procedure, in effect meaning that the affirmative procedure applies. However, Amendment 14 provides that this is not the case of regulations that, ext that extend the life of the power in Section 11. The full requirements of the enhanced procedure, including the duties to have regard to any committee reports or resolutions of the Assembly, will always apply to regulations made under the power contained in Amendment 8. We are content to support them. Simon Thomas, you are very pleased. I am very pleased that the Government has indicated uh, uh, formally on the floor of, of the Parliament that uh, you will now support uh, these amendments as you have laid out quite correctly. Um, I, I do not think it is necessary to put a reference to a committee of the Assembly on the face of the bill, because a committee of the Assembly can do anything it wants at any time anyway. But more importantly, uh, the super affirmative, if you like, uh, will ensure there is a process of discussion that the, I have no doubt the committees of the Assembly will want to become involved. What is important about uh, passing this bill, if we do do that, is that we protect our rights as this current Assembly, but also the future rights of the next Parliament that is elected, uh, and their rights as well to ensure that uh, Government Ministers are not using powers ir irresponsibly or irrationally or in a way that was not foreseen uh, at, at this stage. Uh, I think this is a suitable amendment and consequential amendments to do that, and I am grateful for the support of the Government. Oscar Thodir Gwelliant Oith with Gwelliant Indig Dayag Indig Pedwar and Methi. A question you are the lead Derbyn Gwelliant Oith. How is in reward for Neviad? Felly derbynnu'r gwelliant oeth yn unol yr heol sefydlog 27.3.4.1. Y grŵp nesa o welliannau yw grŵp pedwar sy'n ymwneud ag adrannau 13 ag 14 ar gyd syniad gweinidogion Cymru. Gwelliant naw yw'r prif welliant a'r unig welliant yn y grŵp, a dwi'n galw'r Simon Thomas i gynnig y gwelliant ag i siarad am y gwelliant. Diolch fawr llywydd. Mae gwelliant yma yn ymwneud a chawl sy'n gan gwynedogion Cymru i roi i cytsyniad nhw i gwynedogion y Dainas Gyfrinol i gwneud gyfraith, i newid cyfraith, i dywigio gyfraith yn y maes maesydd datgwn anledig a gyfraith ailwadd, wrth gwrs, gyfraith wedi i dal gan gwynedogion. Eto, dyn ni'n ôl at yr un ddadl yma 
Mae yn biodol, oherwydd y sefyllfaid yn ei ynddo, oherwydd bod ni'n pawatoi i adael yn Undeb Europeaidd, um, fe fydd fel wedysi yn yr uh, uh, gwpdwetha o welliana, fe fydd adeg yn codi pan fydd faid i wynedogion Cymru. Gwneud hynny er mwyn hylustod y gyfraith, er mwyn sicrhau bod dim bwlch yn codi, a, ac er mwyn sicrhau bod y gyfraith yn gweithio yn iawn. Ond fe'r arfer, fe'r arfer byddai lle yma, y cynulliad hwn, ddim yn derbyn bod ni ddim yn rheoli y ffordd mae'r cysyniad yn cael ei fwy a gan gwynedogio. Mae gyda ni boses, wrth gwrs, o um, um, cynnig de, uh, deddfwfiaeth o'r cydsyniadol ar gyfer deddfwfiaeth cynwadd. Uh, mae gyda ni boses drwy pwllgor um, uh, cyfansoddiad a deddfwfiaeth o'r i gadw llygad a beth mae gwynedogio yn ei am am ymysg deddfwfiaeth ailwadd. Ac felly beth mae'r gwelliant yn ei wneud fan hyn yw fwy dyletswydd a Llywodraeth Cymru i gosod y droddiod gedbon y cynulliad um, uh, uh, heb fod yn fwy na'r pythefnos a fod iddyn nhw defnyddio y gwymoedd yma. Ac dyma hwn yn seiliedig os gael ei ddweud a reolau sefydlog bysennol uh, y cynulliad, felly a hyn o byd yn ei dysgod i gwynedogion uh, gwneud hyn. Um, Nawr dwi, dwi'n awas i weld beth sydd gan y um, gwynedog i ddweud ar y materion yma. Um, Mae'n bosib bod... Uh, Y Llywodraeth y Meddwl Pythefnos yn, yn ormod o beth, falle, yn, yn rhy aml, falle bod y Llywodraeth yn sain nhw fyddwn nhw'n gorfo defnyddio gwym yma yn aml iawn, ac felly fyddwn feichus iawn i adrodd pob hyn a hyn, a pob tro, falle fyddwn well bod yna adroddiadau yn ôl yn cael ei wneud yn fwy uh, synhwyrol. Uh, dwi'n edrych yn ymwneud i glywed beth sydd gan y, y, y gwynedog i ddweud ar hynny. Ond dwi'n meddwl bod ein bwysig bod y cynulliad yn cael clywed yn weddol aml uh, sut mae llywod, uh, Llywodraeth a Gwynedogion wedi bod yn defnyddio gwymoedd hyn? Pa baesydd sydd wedi cael ei newid neu diwygio, so ni'n deall beth sydd wedi digwydd. Ac wrth gwrs, pob tro ni'n neud hwnna, nid adrodd yn ôl i ni, mae Llywodraeth, ond adrodd yn ôl i bobl Cymru. Uh, Drwy ddwn ni, ie, yeah, ond i bobl Cymru. I bobl ddeall y sylweddoli, sut mae gandol yn Indibio Piaeth, wedi newid y gyfraith sy'n ymwneud yn nhw, wedi newid y prosesau, ac sut mae nhw gallu ymateb yn ni. Felly, nid uh, os gael ei ddweud gwelliant byrocrataidd yw hwn, ond uh, gwelliant democrataidd sy'n agor dwys a defnyddio pwerau gan gwynedogion Cymru. Galwaf ar arweinydd y tŷ, Julie James. Diolch um, I've given careful consideration to Amendment 9 and its interaction with sections 13 and 14, and also reflected on the report published by the Constitutional and Legislative Affairs Committee, particularly recommendation 6 contained in that report. Um, as Simon Thomas has, has said, the purposes of section 13 and 14 is to create a default rule so that unless the UK Parliament decides otherwise, the UK Government would need to obtain consent in relation to the making, approving or confirming of secondary legislation within the scope of EU law in devolved areas. That is inherently an important safeguard for maintaining the integrity of the rules that exist in devolved areas. These sections would achieve the same objectives as the proposed amendments to the EU Withdrawal Bill that we jointly published with the Scottish <coughs> Government that re would require the UK Government to seek the Welsh Minister's consent when exercising powers under that bill in relation to devolved matters. Under sections 13 and 14, it is the Welsh Ministers rather than the Assembly which should give consent. This reflects the fact that generally it is appropriate that the consent process for UK secondary legislation should be conducted between governments rather than legislatures. However, I set out in the response to the report issued by the Constitution and Legislative Affairs Committee, sections 13 and 14 establish a position which is without prejudice to the existing statutory instrument consent motion process provided for in Standing Order 38, as Simon pointed out. So whether UK legislation amends primary legislation within devolved competence in relation to any subordinate legislation, not just that within the scope of EU law, the Assembly's current role is preserved. Amendment 9 does not alter the essential nature of the consent requirements. That is, who provides the consent and in what circumstances. It does, however, provide a duty for the Welsh Ministers to report to the National Assembly where they have provided consent under their powers in sections 13 and 14. This seems to us to be a reasonable and useful proposal and we have no objection to it in principle. However, as Simon Thomas rightly said, the requirement to do this within two weeks of each occasion on which consent might be given would potentially result in a very large number of reports being made. For example, if the UK Parliament does not legislate to the contrary, sections 13 and 14 would apply to the powers contained in the EU Withdrawal Bill. However, this bill is, de is, de is designed to coexist with the EU Withdrawal Bill, and therefore, where it is in the best interest of Wales, minor and technical deficiencies in default legislation could be addressed in regulations made by the UK under the EU Withdrawal Bill for the entirety of the UK. 
This could result in large numbers of regulations being consented to on what are likely to be very minor and technical issues. As a result, Amendment 9, as drafted, would result in an unjustifiable, uh, unjustifiable administrative burden, and I cannot support it. I would, however, be very willing to work with Simon Thomas to bring forward a revised amendment at Stage 3 that requires a report to be laid before the Assembly on a periodic basis, covering all consents given in a specified period and the detail of those consents, as we have no objection to the principle itself. Simon Thomas, you matter, uh, Thank you, Presiding Officer, and uh, I welcome, I think, the, the, the acceptance in principle that the uh, uh, Minister just gave to us. I, I think it is important. We, we acknowledge that a lot of this legislation actually that arrives from the European Union is done jointly on an England and Wales basis. Sometimes that's a source of frustration to some of us, particularly when it isn't done in the Welsh language and is only done in English. But that, that's a, another argument for the Council of General statement later on. Um, but we, we do come to, I think, to some idea of clarity around these. Yes, a lot of them will be technical, uh, but even in technical uh, changes, there are interest groups or people who are affected by technical changes. They need to understand what's happened and how it's been exercised. Uh, I welcome, therefore, that there is a willingness to work on perhaps an alternative amendment that we can bring forward tomorrow to stage three that the government uh, might want to support or, or believe it could support. If two weeks is too often, um, then to go to the other end, you know, a, an annual report, for example, in my mind, would be too ill frequently. We won't be able to get the right balance uh, of understanding what the government is making. But um, subject um, uh, to, I think, the consent of the Committee of the House, in that regard, I would not want to vote on this uh, amendment if the amendment can be withdrawn, subject to perhaps a further amendment coming forward tomorrow. Oes unrhyw wrth wynebiad i'r pleidlais yma beidiogal i chynnal, felly. Nagos, felly, newn i ddim cymryd pleidlais ar welliant naw. Yr grŵp nesaf welliant neu grŵp pimp sy'n ymwneud ag egwyddorion amgylcheddol. Gwelliant deg yw'r prif welliant yn y grŵp yma. Dwi'n galw ar Simon Thomas i gynnig y prif welliant ac i siarad i'r gwelliant yma ag ar gwelliant e eraill yn y grŵp. Simon Thomas. Diolch llawydd. This amendment and the related amendments I think very important and they are missing from the face of the bill as it's currently constructed. Uh, what the amendments seek to do is to retain and enshrine some of the most important environmental uh, treat principles that have been established under the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union in Welsh law. These are principles that many of our citizens rely upon uh, to campaign on, to uh, uh, do the best for their own environment, to take us to court sometimes, uh, take governments to court. Uh, clean air, for example, is, a, is an example that we've had only recently. But they're important principles of environmental justice that our citizens are exercising uh, daily. Uh, some of these principles have become so familiar to us, we don't realise where they came from. The precautionary principle is rooted in EU law, but we talk about it all the time. When we make other laws here, we talk about the precautionary uh, principle. Uh, Pluto pays principle is reflected widely in UK and, and Welsh legislation. And nobody would really argue with that principle now, but it was originally a EU principle. Having these principles uh, in our legislation and in the treaties that establish the current EU mean that they can be used by courts. They are used by business. I mean, businesses will complain to me, and I'm sure they complain to other assembly members about, for example, the precautionary principle. But they, when you get down to it and you talk to them in detail, they realise that these principles provide a, an even playing field, a level playing field. So when they do in business with a half a billion people in, in the European Union, everyone is doing the same business and in the same regulations and in the same way. So though you do get complaints from time to time, not many people want to take away completely principles that underpin how they do business with each other, how the environment is protected, and how government makes decision making. So how fundamentally ministers make their decisions are also rooted in these principles. So when they act unreasonably, uh, as I'm sure this government would never do, but does on occasion happen, you can take them to court. And you can say that they haven't followed the principles, and you can win your court case. Or, as this government did do very recently on uh, air pollution, concede the case in advance and agree uh, a set uh, procedure to deal with the complaint that's been brought. So these are principles are absolutely vital to the way we hold governments to account, the way we exercise our businesses, the way we go about our daily lives. The public should be able to rely on them, the court should be able to apply them, and the public body should be able to follow them. But they're not on the face of the bill. Now, we may hear an argument from the Minister, I'm sure, that they don't need to be stated on the face of the bill because they're part of it anyway. Uh, this is a bill about retaining law uh, derived from the European Union. Therefore, you don't need to restate everything on the face of the bill because 
it's got it in the title. It exact, does exactly what it says on the tin. But there is this to consider. Uh, the current bill before us, which we are going to do stage three on tomorrow, is already its Scottish version before stage three uh, uh, in the Scottish Parliament, I think, today. Um, but certainly the Scottish Government have confirmed that they will now include these environmental principles on the face of their bill. Uh, it's crucial, I think, that the Welsh Government does likewise, and I think it sends a very strong message to our citizens and to those who care about the environment, but also those who care about environmental justice, equality between businesses, uh, and good lawmaking by ministers, that we see the current uh, practices protected as we leave the European Union. And if there is to be any change to these principles, that's a conscious change exercised by the sovereign parliaments of the United Kingdom, not something that arises by default because we have not been clear enough in this bill about the principles that we want to preserve. Jenny Rathbone. Um, I thank uh, Simon Thomas for, for placing this amendment because I think it highlights uh, some of the potential risks if we're not deliberate in uh, supporting the environmental principles that we've enjoyed uh, through the EU. Yes, uh, many of these principles are enshrined in the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act and in the Environmental Act, but I think it is also important that we re restate as the Scottish Parliament is doing, that um, both the precautionary principle applies in everything we do, that environmental damage needs to be rectified at source, and that the polluter pays. And as Simon Thomas pointed out, if, if citizens hadn't had the right through EU law to challenge a government's failure to act on um, air pollution, then we wouldn't have had this issue highlighted and it wouldn't have been put to the top of government's agenda as a result. So I hope that at stage three, the government might be able to uh, come up with a, a form of words that would enshrine these very important environmental principles and restate them so that the polluters aren't looking for loopholes in order to uh, shove a cart and horses through them. Arwena the tea, Julie James. Well, as Simon Thomas has uh, rightly said, the purpose of the law derived from the European Union Wales Bill is to ensure legal continuity in relation to EU-derived law following the UK's withdrawal from the European Union. This will include continuity in relation to many of the elements of EU-derived law which relate to the environment and environmental protection. As a government, we have been clear and consistent in our message that Brexit must not result in a dilution of the rights which currently flow from our membership of the EU or of the standards that apply across member states, including environmental standards. This is, approach is in line with our recent legislative commitments in relation to the environment, where we incorporated key principles in both the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act and the Environment Act, which form part of the important overarching framework for environmental protection in Wales. We have placed the environment and, more broad, broadly, sustainable development at the heart of our government here in Wales. As Leslie Griffiths, the Cabinet Secretary for Energy Planning and Rural Affairs, has made very clear, we as a government are committed to maintaining and enhancing environmental standards, and we will continue to build upon the positive outcomes we have achieved to date. In terms of maintaining environmental standards, the LDEU Bill provides powers for the Welsh Ministers to ensure that current environmental protections contained in EU law are preserved. This includes the powers to replicate existing regulatory functions currently being exercised by EU institutions such as the European Commission, and in doing so we would be under a duty to seek to continue the rights, obligations, remedies and procedures that are currently available under EU law. However, the principles set out in Amendment 10 do not collectively have a single legal status or effect. Therefore, their treatment under the LDEU Bill varies depending upon the matter at issue. For example, the precautionary principle is, as a general principle of EU law, given effect by Section 7 of the Bill. The Bill requires that all EU-derived law must be interpreted in accordance with this and the other general principles of EU law. By contrast, other principles, such as the polluter pays principle, though recognised in the treaties, is not a general principle of EU law. However, the Environmental Liability Directive creates a framework based on the polluter pays principle to prevent and remedy environmental damage. In <coughs> Wales, this directive is implemented by the Environmental Damage Prevention and Remediation Wales Regulations 2009, which would fall within the scope of Section 5 of the Bill. The Bill, for the, the bill therefore provides the powers of the Welsh Ministers to continue the polluter pays principle. 
Another issue which the amendments raise is that, to some extent, they contain an element of seeking to enhance and improve the protections afforded to the environment. However, this bill is about continuity. It is not the place for creating a new legal framework for environmental protection in Wales. We are committed to enhancing environmental protections. I have already referred to the Cabinet Secretary for Energy Planning and Rural Affairs' commitment to enhancing environmental standards and to building upon our achievements to date. And work is ongoing to identify opportunities for improvements that are in the best interests of Wales as we leave the European Union. To inform this work, we are fully engaging with stakeholders, including with the Energy Planning and Rural Affairs EU Exit Roundtable, to gain their views. We have also been actively engaging with the UK Government and the other devolved administrations to consider all potential options as we look to ensure that we deliver the best solution for Wales. The conclusions of that work are not for this Bill and not for today. To summarise, insofar as environmental principles are currently written into or apply to existing EU-derived law, the Bill will enable us to maintain these. From our track record, it is evident that the Welsh Government is committed to maintaining and enhancing environmental protections, and Brexit will not change this. We are therefore currently working with stakeholders to identify how best to ensure that we not only maintain the current environmental protections afforded under EU law, but also look to enhance and improve the steps we take to ensure the integrity of the environment for future generations. Therefore, although we as a government fully support the sentiments behind these amendments, I do urge members to reject amendments 10 and 15, as this bill must solely be focused on continuity. Simon Thomas, you are uh, I uh, listened with great care what the Minister said, and uh, I recognise the dilemma that she set out in that this is a continuity bill. We cannot uh, take uh, action to further enhance, if you like. Uh, I know it very well because I did try to make, make further amendments to the bill uh, around the governance gap that has been identified, uh, indeed the, identified by the uh, uh, Constitutional Legislative Affairs Committee in its own report. Um, the governance gap is real, and it's there for... Uh, for our citizens, but it's quite difficult to squeeze into the bill at the moment. But who knows, by tomorrow we might be able to do it, and uh, we can have a debate about that at that stage. But I think the principal thing is, it's not designed to, to um, try and, and do that. That's presumably why it's been accepted by the table office. It's designed to try and restate these core principles. And it, I just quote that what Lord Debden has said. I think that was John Selwyn Gummer, as he is now, isn't it? It is, yes. Um, he explained in the uh, Lords Committee on the EU Withdrawing Bill, uh, he said the following, all environmental law in the European Union has been intimately connected with the principles upon which it is based. Indeed, you cannot understand the law unless you understand the principles. I think that's quite a good idea to get hold of, because what the government's response has been is to concentrate on the law and not concentrate on the principles. And what I'm trying to do is get the, other, the argument going the other way round. And I, I hope, therefore, that um, uh, though I would certainly seek uh, the support of the Assembly uh, on these principles uh, today. Uh, if we are unable to get that support, we uh, do have an, uh, an interesting suggestion from uh, uh, Jenny Rathbone that the Government itself thinks by tomorrow how it might be able to better reflect uh, these principles on the face of its own bill. So it doesn't just rely on this law has been, you know, been taken into account by these regulations and all the rest of it, but has a statement on the bill that just shows what the Government is trying to intend to preserve uh, and retain uh, in regards of citizens' rights and environmental justice as we leave the European Union. Um, I think an over-reliance on procedures and, and regulation, though I understand it from a legal point of view, uh, when we make law, we make political law as well. And we, make, you know, we have a law here, uh, the Future Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, which virtually doesn't do anything, but is a statement of principle. Uh, it's 100% principle and you know, nothing, very little else. Um, and and making, you know, when you make law, you have to have the right combination of principle and practical effect. And I think we're over-reliant on practical effect here and not saying enough about the principle. Question you whether it has been a question for us in the next So we don't need a electronic or a blade lice. Cair bladelais o blaid daith e gyn dai yn ymadal 33 yn erbyn felly gwrthodwyd gwelliant deg. Gwelliant un ar ddeg, Simon Thomas. Uh, can I... Cwestiwn i'w ydyl i derbyn gwelliant un ar ddeg a oes unrhyw wrthwynebiad. Sy'n mynd o'n i bladelais electronig agor bladelais.
Tair Bladelice, Oblai Dai the Quech, Dai and Matal, Dai the Guith and Erbin, Vesli Gurthoduid Gwesliant Inarthig, Gwesliant Deideg, Simon Thomas. A question you other lead Erbin Gwesliant Deideg, how is in Ruth Winebiad? Der Bener Gwelliant Deideg. A group Nessa Vesu Group Quir, a group Olav or Wesliane, a Manuna Muneid Agwith Drevene, and doing Gallo are Arwene the T. Eganig Gwelliant Pimp, Seva Pre Wesliant in a group, Agisharad are a Gwelliane Erish in a group, Arwene the T. Julie James. Dear Clara. The Government has brought forward Amendments 5 and 6 in response to Recommendations 7 and 8 of the report on the LDEU Bill produced by the Constitution and Legislative Affairs Committee. Recommendation 7 calls for an amendment to the Bill that re would require explanatory memoranda accompanying regulations made to it to set out, when relevant, why the affirmative procedure rather than the enhanced procedure should apply. However, under the enhanced procedure set out in the LDEU Bill, the decision on whether the affirmative procedure is to apply or whether the further steps required as part of the enhanced procedure are to apply is for the Assembly, not for Welsh Ministers. In light of this, Amendment 5 requires the Welsh Ministers to lay a statement alongside draft regulations that are subject to the enhanced procedure. The duty will require the Welsh Ministers to state whether they consider that the affirmative procedure or enhanced procedure should apply and their reasons why. The statement could then be taken into account by the Assembly in making its decision on which procedure is to apply. Recommendation, recommendation 8 of the CLAC report is similar to Recommendation 7, but applies in the context of the urgent procedure. Amendment 6 is tabled in direct response to this and requires the Welsh Ministers to lay a statement alongside draft regulations which are to be subject to the urgent procedure. The statement must outline the circumstances that have led to the urgency and the reasons why the Welsh Ministers consider the urgent procedure should apply. However, both Recommendations 7 and 8 of the Constitution and Legal Affairs Committee report go further in setting out the information that should be contained in explan explanatory memoranda. I have considered this carefully and am an able to ex accept that a requirement for this information should be provided for on the face of the Bill. There are two reasons for my opposition to this. Firstly, there has been no history of issues in terms of the qu quality or scope of explanatory memoranda accompanying subordinate legislation laid before the Assembly. Indeed, the matters cited by CLAC as recommended requirements are matters that are generally contained in explanatory memoranda, which accompany all statutory instruments made by the Welsh Ministers. Secondly, taking such a prescriptive approach could inadvertently constrain the ability of Assembly Committees to scrutinise explanatory memoranda covering any other matters not listed in this Bill. Committees of the Assembly can scrutinise legislation on whatever issues they consider appropriate and, where they deem it necessary, seek more information from the Welsh Government on any issues arising from their consideration of subordinate legislation. I would not wish for the provision in this Bill to predetermine the information committees must consider. I note that Simon Thomas's Amendment 13 requires the Welsh Ministers to lay a statement before the Assembly explaining why provision is needed if any draft regulations that they, that they lay modify primary legislation. This seems to be an appropriate and proportionate requirement where primary legislation is being modified. I therefore ask members to support Amendments 5 and 6 as a positive and practical response to Recommendations 7 and 8 in the Constitution and Legal Affairs Committee report and to support Simon Thomas's Amendment 13. Simon Thomas. Uh, you can ensure us your Gwynedd Ogion uh, Cymru yn defnyddio i Gwynedd Gwynedd i gwneud uh, uh, rheolau ddiadau sydd yn newid um, deddfwfiaeth cynnwaf, uh, prif deddfwfiaeth felly, uh, bod na datganiad yn cael ei wneud yn esbonio uh, pam bod hwnna wedi wneud ger bod yn cynulliad. Dwi'n meddwl mae dyna lai a dweud y gwir y gallwch chi disgwyl i llywodraeth yn ei wneud. Dwi'n derbyn na um, fai o pwyntiau cyffredinol eraill ynglyn ar man ddeddfwfiaeth o slicwch chi oedd y Gwynedd yn ei wneud ond fyddwn ni'n annog uh, hefyd y cynulliad i gwneud yn siŵr uh, os ni'n rhoi y gwymoedd yma i Llywodraeth Cymru uh, bod nhw'n nwyta yn adrodd yn briodol nôl i ni pan maen nhw'n defnyddio'r gwymoedd yna. Ar, Arwain yn the T, yma te byrddadl? Yes, dear Llawr. Um, I do hope that members will see amendments 5 and 6 as a considered and constructive response by the Welsh Government to the uh, committee report and I would urge members to support those recommendations along with amendment 13 for the reasons that Simon Thomas has stated. 
A question you are the lead derbing question pimp. I was in Ruworth with Nebiad. Derbenir question pimp. Simon Thomas question in the tree. Can I? Question you are the lead derbing question in the tree. I was in Ruworth with Nebiad. Derbenir question in the tree. Simon Thomas question in the pedwar. Can I? Question you are the lead derbing question in the pedwar. I was in Ruworth with Nebiad. Derbenir question in the pedwar. Are we in the T? Question Quech. Formally. Question you are the lead derbing question Quech. I was in Ruworth with Nebiad. Derbenir question Quech. Simon Thomas question in the pen. Here, can Here. The Mancali Ganig, Agveshi, the Mancali Bled Lisha Arno. Adamani Doda, the weather study has come not die or Bill Cavret Sindesio or in the Bureau of Pia, come Datgan, but Pope Adran or Bill a four but Hodlin, where the eight Derbin, Dauhani Vesia Kavno die a Puishkor or Kanishad Kavani Ben, Makavno tree and Dechre Arinwaith. At a at Goffer or a Lorde, my Tervin am Serer Gever Kavlui no Guashane, you dig a gloch heno, be the Guashane uncaliestered in a Kvarvod sound of pronoun of Ori. Vashidana, the with our a Puishkor abid a Kvarvod sound or Kanishadama and Kahuin Mount Quarter Hour, Agbegener Gloch, Piminet, Kin Kahuin a Kvarvod Honey. Jacobat.